This is a Panasonic Air VSK 0815L AC adapter which shipped with my new camera. Uh, and uh, much contrary to popular belief, I'm not British, so this plug is entirely worthless to me. So, uh, this is a 5 volt 1.8 amp adapter, obviously for charging the camera at a reasonable rate, uh, and uh, I'd like to use it. Now, the obvious way to do that would be to just solder a couple of leads onto that and uh, have a wire coming out of it, but uh, I figure that's going to void the warranty on the power supply anyway, so I figured we might as well take it apart and have a bit of a look inside to see uh, what the AC adapter shipping with a 700 euro product looks like. Is it going to be good? Is it going to be bad? I guess we'll find out. Uh, it is ultrasonically welded, so getting inside is going to be a bit of an issue. Uh, exterior signs do hint at some kind of build quality. We'll have a gold-plated uh, USB connector, and it, it feels like a generally a sturdy device, very lightweight, but you pretty much expect that out of a modern switch mode power supply. But yeah, let's bring out the chisel and hammer and get inside. There we go, starting to crack it, the chisel isn't doing much good since it's lapping out, since the edges are going above each other, so I think we'll have better, better luck with just the blunt force of a hammer. There we go, very much inside. And what can we leave in there? It's not wanting to come out very easily, that's for certain. There we go. And inside it does look like a reasonable quality. A little switch made paint supply. Uh, first hint of quality, we have a proper looking mains filter there with a uh, big film cap, comma mode rejection choke. On the other side of the board we actually have a real bridge rectifier as opposed to just four. Uh, 4007 diodes, a uh, bit of extra filtering going on there too. Uh, the switch I see seems to be an OB5222AG, uh, which seems to be rather difficult to find data on, but uh, it's uh, advertised as a very high, uh, very low standby power, uh, low power switching device, entirely integrated 5 ohm integrated MOSFET, uh, specified for 30 milliwatts of standby power power consumption, which is quite impressive, uh, although I'm not sure that includes magnetics. Uh, capacitors, Suscon brand, not the worst, by far not the best, but it's not going to be horribly bad, it's not one of those absolutely no-name Chinese ones. Uh, optocoupler, you know, cap bridging primary secondary, looking just fine, not going to kill you. Actual cap there, what's V doing? I don't know, it's entirely on the primary side. Uh, very nice looking silk screen on this board. Well, I'd like, I love how they've uh, marked out the line between primary and secondary there. Excellent isolation distance. I do not mind that at all. This is going to be legal and safe, and I have very little doubt that this transformer is going to be of some horrible Chinese vintage with no isolation either. Secondary side, rectifier to quite generic looking 3 amp-ish diodes labelled SB8 something or the other SB82 perhaps yeah they're, they're gonna do the job uh, on the other side we do have some magic going on regarding the data pins on the USB line you know because uh, this is the positive of a USB and uh, the negative is going all around but we do have uh, a resistor going to ground and then the data pins as well as another resistor going to positive and the data pins. They measure about 3.6k so that's a reasonably low resistance and I'd wager this is just keeping it at uh, 2.5 volts ish. Uh, we're gonna find that out in a moment. I have no idea what all this extra circuit around here does though. Uh, it looks very high tech for uh, the purpose of a device, although it does seem to be intertwined with the optocoupler, so it's probably just a part of the feedback network and nothing fancier with that. I really like this power supply. I have seen many worse 
and frankly not that many better ones. I like it. I sincerely do. I also like how they've used a USB connector which has three uh, big mounting pins. So it's not just going to wiggle itself loose because uh, there's nothing supporting it in the front. You can actually see the pin in there actually going down to the board. So it does have some uh, quite reasonable means of being a good, reliable, long-lasting power supply. These caps are going to go bad in time. Uh, what are the values? Uh, 680 microfarads, 16 volts. I'm happy to see that because electrolytics last longer the further away from the rated voltage you are. And these are rolls of the high capacitance as well. Uh, for a 5 volt power supply, this current size. Uh, I have no idea what the brand of this thing is. We do have some kind of a logo there. And it says MW2. And uh, you can read all the numbers if you want and do your research. I can't be bothered. I uh, wouldn't be surprised if it's not a Panasonic in-house thing, but rather some something they've purchased from some Chinese guy. But they seem to have done the specifications well, and I don't mind. So let's uh, try and pair this thing up, and in particular see what is holding the uh, data lines of the USB connector at, because that's always a point of curiosity, because there's no real standard for that as far as I'm concerned. Alright, so I've got a bit of a test hooked up now, so we've got uh, my light power supply feeding 150 volts in there once I press the button, and we have my multimeter connected up to the USB cord with probe hanging loose in the air, and we've also got my little uh, speaker light set to 4 ohms and connected to the output, so we can put um, just over an amp of load on this thing and uh, see how it behaves, so let's just uh, turn the switch and see if it goes up in flames. Nope, well, we do have an output. And we have 5.12 volts. And what do we have on the magical data lines? 3.4 volts on that one, and yeah, the other one's gonna be the same. 3.4 volts, so it's a bit over 2.5 volts, a bit over 50%, so that's a bit odd. Oh well, I guess that's all the camera wants, so that's something to make a note of. So let's just uh, probe the 8 foot cap and uh, turn on the uh, 4 ohm load and see what it does. Oh wow, that is excellent voltage regulation. There is barely any sag in that voltage. <laughs> in fact, it goes up a bit. I'm impressed. I'm highly impressed by that. Is it actually working? I have to double check now. Alright, I've introduced a current meter to the equation, so let's... Yep. That is a one amp load. That is an excellent feedback loop. I am highly impressed, and let's not short everything out here. Uh, does the voltage on the data pins change? Nope, that remains entirely the same. Wow, the fact that it's regulating that well is staggering. I was not expecting that. Most USB pages of last test to do sag down just a bit, you know, they go down to 5.00 volts or so when they're loaded down. So, judging from that, I would say that Panasonic have done an excellent job with this power supply. Hmm. There you go. I'm not going to be afraid using this thing at all. Even a little nifty feature they do have on it is uh, uh, this diode here. Uh, it's actually a reverse polarity protection diode on the output. So this thing is actually reverse uh, polarity protected uh, in case you hook up something stupid to uh, the output of it. Uh, not that that diode's going to do a whole lot of good if you connect some giant power bank with a USB male to male adapter in there, but at least for trying, and in case the adapter starts putting out negative voltage somehow, it's going to clamp it at least for a little while until it goes up in flames. 
And just for kicks, I figured we'd have a bit of a look at the efficiency of this thing. So I've now got my Brahmin meter hooked up uh, in series with the input. Uh, we knew that we're putting it 5.12 volts at 1.07-ish amps into the load. That gives us uh, about 5.5 watts or so of output. So we have something to go by. And uh, we have exactly 150 volts on the input. So let's check the current. Uh, load is off now, so this is going to be idle. Wow. Idle power consumption, granted this is a DC, it, but that's 0.22 milliamps. Now, what's that in watts? That's 33 milliwatts of idle power consumption. 33 milliwatts, that is insane. That is an excellent result. I'm I'm surprised. I thought the 10 milliamps was on the power supply was right, but that's that's fantastic. That's excellent. That is absolutely an excellent result. So uh, let's check the uh, under load consumption. There we go. 45.22. And that's pretty much 6.7 watts consumed for a 5.5 watts output, giving us about 80% efficiency. That's not bad either. That is not bad at all. I have to give a big thumbs up to Panasonic for this power supply. Not only is the build quality reasonable, uh, but the efficiency is excellent. I have nothing to complain about with this. So it seems that uh, you do get your money's worth even when it comes to the power supply for this expensive camera. I mean, that's just excellent. I have nothing more to say. It's a great power supply. Good job, Panasonic. Seriously. Alright, so now all that remains is turning this into a European style adapter and uh, it's obviously no, never going to plug into an outlet directly and I didn't really desire that feature. So I've got a mains cord here snipped from a, a new old stock power supply, transformer based, nothing of value was lost. And um, I figured the way we'd go about it is uh, I'll snip this fake ground thingy off uh, and uh, drill a hole there and then I'll pull the cord in right there. Uh, and we can tie not having it sit in this little recess there, giving it a bit of strain relief without having to have a knot inside the case. Uh, because it does get a bit cramped in there if we put the entire power supply in there. It would be a bit of an issue having the a knot or something of a wire to uh, stop it from moving about. So it's going to be a bit of an ugly solution since uh, it's obviously not going to be uh, getting rid of this big fat British bulge, which, uh, no pun intended, which uh, is technically not required here at all, but it does give us a quite neat solution. Okay all the holes we need. Perhaps we can just kind of snip these as well. I'd rather not have a British plug feature of killing you if you step on it. Gah. Those are manly. <laughs> you can see they're pretty much metal straight through, aren't they? Oh well. Ah. There you go. Lovely. A true work of pristine beauty and art. That's what hot glue's for. We can just seal that up once we're done. I don't quite care. I'll say really nice and tight knot there. Hoping if we can f kind of, yeah, that fits quite well in the hill. That's going to be excellent. Yep, that's going to be good enough. A bit of hot glue around that to just keep it in place a bit extra, preventing preventing it from just going up that way and just kind of wiggling about, hurting the uh, mechanical strength of the wire around here, because that's going to be a bit of a weak spot. But I'm so gentle with my stuff. Not that you ever see that in camera. It's like an absolute charm. 
Good and ask for more. I want a snipper rifle out of there. These hills are tiny, real tiny. Gonna have to change that around. I think that's gonna work. A treat. Yep. Absolutely perfect. The wire's coming in underneath the PCB since it's just protruding so shallowly into that case there. And a bit of hot glue all over the place. And this is going to be like a manufactured product. And while the glue gun's heating up, we'll just put a bit of tape over those holes. Red to signify danger. Just to stop a hot glue from coming out, it would be a bit of a pointless thing to have a couple of testicles having hanging out of there. There we go. That ought to cover those up nicely. Now let's just get the board in there before it settles. I think that's going to glue the yeah, it's going to glue the wire in place as well. So we want that to be nice and... What the hell is going on? And we want that to be nice and sturdy in there. Oh, let's just fill this up while we're at it. There we go. That's not going to be going anywhere. Uh, oh dear. What cracks for case. Oh, well, the parts are still left there, so it doesn't matter. Uh, I think this is gonna. Uh, we actually have a little slit there for the board up top, so I think this is actually such a tight fit that we don't even need any uh, actual adhesive to keep it together. That would be nice. I'm just gonna put a little dab of hot glue on there. There we go. Just to make it a bit more mechanically sturdy since it's not going to be welded anymore. Ah, oh, yeah. That is excellent. That went together way better than these usually do. That's usually a big, horrible crack around where the ultrasonic world is broken, but that's not the case. Well, this one is looking excellent. I can barely even see the crack there. Yeah, let's just be ugly about it and do a bit of this just to just to ensure that it doesn't come apart too easily. I'm going to wrap all the tape anyway, but my camera is the adapters. Do you see a fairly horrible and violent life since they're always too short and too far away. And then I get annoyed. And then they come to me quite quickly, usually. There we go. Just needs a bit more danger. I should probably be using proper brand name tape for this rather than class Olsen ultra cheap crap. That's going to be good enough. Oh, this is annoying. Tape's going to start coming off there. Oh well. We'll remedy that with more tape. Ah, there we go. That's my type of PT adapter. And it just needs proper label. Pa na so nick five V one point eight. Hey, there we go. Well, that's a look 
into the Panasonic whatever the model number AC adapter which you get with the HC VX980 camera and probably all of the others of the range it's an excellent quality adapter and this is how you turn it into a European style plug thank you for watching, cheerio